It was a Saturday afternoon in July. The day was like any other summer day with the hot sun beating down on two middle-aged men who were fishing at one of Iowa's popular recreational destinations, Adley Lake. Who had the idea of fishing on a scorching day like this? It must be 95 degrees for crying out loud. And the only bites I'm getting are from these stupid head flies. Have you caught anything, Marty? No, Mickey. I'm gonna quit buying those Iowa game and fish magazines. They said to use crankbaits for bass, and the only thing I've caught is one puny bluegill. And I snaked that little bugger. And for the record, you and you instigated this little fishing trip. Well, oh well. We still have plenty of time to catch some fish before this day is over, Ozzy. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, why don't you reach in that cooler and grab me a cold drink? I drank the last one over a half hour ago. What? We bought a 12-pack of Mellow Yellow, and I only had two cans. For crying out loud, Mickey, we've only been fishing for a couple of hours. I wanted squirt, not Mellow Yellow. Besides, I was very thirsty. <laughs> what are you, a camel? What am I supposed to do now? Drink leg water? <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. Oh man, I do have to pee though. Perhaps it was all that soda pop I've drank. I'm going to buy a tree really quick. <laughs> After his buddy, Mickey Donovan, went to find an appropriate place to relieve himself, Art Jackson, frustrated with the lack of fishing action, picked up his gear and moved several yards down the shoreline, where he came to a spot that looked like it had some potential. This looks like it could be a, could be a good place to fish, but first things first, I'm going to take off this shad wrap and put on a MIPS number no. 4 Sonic Sweep. Maybe my luck will change. There we go. I'll just give this a chance. What the? Of all the dumb luck, I would have to get a snag. Let go of my lure, you lousy stump, stick, or whatever you are. Nuts! That Meg's Sonic Swing cost me $5.99 at Kmart. There's no way I'm going to let it rot out there. I'm going to go out and get it. What the? Ow! That really hurt! I must have stepped on a piece of glass or something. I think my foot has been cut. As Art lifted his leg to see what was the matter, suddenly the water around him was stirred, and then he felt another jolt of pain in his legs. What's going on? There's something in the water! I gotta get out of here! I'm hurt! I'm hurt! Help me! Mickey! Mickey! Help me! Please, help me! What's your problem? What the? Oh my goodness! We've got to get you to a hospital on it! Just stay calm, old buddy! Up, up! Stay with me, baby! Help me! Help me! Help! Hi, everybody. Welcome to Forbes Field, adjacent to the University of Pittsburgh campus. While Chief Roby was, was watching the baseball ball game, ball he received a disturbing game. call. Weather today is frigid and foggy. But if you yeah, reading, this is Roby. Well, Polly, what am I supposed to do? How Ranger Brewster take care of it? It's his, it's my day off. He's out of old man Parker's getting his cat out of a tree? All right, all right, I'm on my way. I'll be at the lake in 20 minutes. Boy, I can't spend one day at home without being bothered. Honey, I have to go. I'll be home for dinner. Chief Roby madly slammed the door of his cruiser and went to Hadley Lake. Can I get your name? Name's Donovan, Mickey Donovan. I live in Indianola. Came up to fit with Doc for the day. And oh man, things went from bad to worse. So let me let me get this straight. You saw him go into the water? 
No, I didn't actually see him going wider. I've taken a massive pee. I heard him shout, and then I saw Art, and all something went laying on the bank. He was writing in great pain. So he was conscious at the time? Yes, he was screaming in pain, saying he had been attacked by something in the water. Then he passed out. I saw blood of blood streaming from his right foot. I'm thinking it was a snapper. It had to be a snapper, Chief. I've seen some really big ones in this lake, and I think one of them must have taken some bites out of his foot. You, you say he was wet? Yeah, he was in the whole wet. He's way in the water. Soaked to the skin. Like it fell into the water or something. Why would he just go into the water for no reason? The bank is not steep. Hmm. Uh, so an accidental fall in the water is out of the question. Unless... Were you drinking? If you call drinking ten gallons of mellow yellow drinking, well then yes. No, no. Were you drinking alcohol? No, sir. I did not drink. And I have been sober now for over five years. Huh. If Rod and Rio are sitting next to the bank, I'll just pick up the pole. Still has his line in the water. <coughs> he definitely had a snake of some sort. Hmm. Perhaps he... No. I don't think so. I heard he is still unconscious, Chief. Is he going to be all right? Will he be able to go to the fishing trip next week? Top time will tell. Can you tell me anything else? Hmm. That's pretty much it. Arch piercing screams and all that blood. I'll never get it out of my mind. It was horrible and terrible. Can I go now? I have to go home and watch the final season of Wicked Tuna. Yes. Thank you for your time, Mr. Donovan. I'll be in touch if I have any more questions. Polly, I'm at still at Hattie Lake. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna look things over to see if I can discover what happened. Talk to you later. Hmm. Aside from the fishing pole, there's nothing out of the ordinary. Boy, this one's got me baffled. There must be something. Wait a minute. In the water. What is that? A shoe? The front of it is completely gone like as if something had bit it off. This is no snapping turtle attack. After a fitful night of contemplating what had occurred at Hadley Lake, Chief Roby got up and showered and headed to the police station. Hey Chief, you're up awful early. You look terrible. Didn't sleep well last night. That's a shame, Chief. Too bad about Colbert Jackson. How about a nice thing in that cup of Folgers? No thanks. Uh, for crying out loud, Polly. If this new filing system is going to work, you're going to have to get rid of the outdated stuff. Just keep the files that are pending, all right? Yes, Chief. Now we've got a bunch of calls about the karate school. It seems the nine-year-olds from the school have been karate chopping the big offenses. Oh, I almost forgot. The medical examiner, Dr. Quimby, left this here last night after you left. Hmm. Cause of accident. Musket attack. Polly, where do we keep the beach clothes signs? Mayor, Doctor, Ranger Brewster? You don't have any, Chief. What would we need? Then make some. Nobody is going to go swimming in that lake until we get whatever took the chunk out of that fisherman. Uh, you want to close Hadley Lake Beach? It's a musket attack. Dr. Clooney there has confirmed it. I have to shut down the beach. By your authority, the Hadley Lake Beach gets shut down. What other authority do I need? Well, technically, Chief, you need a resolution or a civic ordinance. And that's just going by the book. Martin, 
We're a little worried that you might be rushing hastily into something serious here. After all, it's your first summer here, you know. And what is that supposed to mean? What I'm trying to say is, Hadleyville is a summer town and we need summer dollars. If people can't swim or fish at Hadley Lake, they will take their money and their business to Sailorville Lake, Red Rock, or Easter Lake. That doesn't mean we have to serve them up as a smorgasbord. You saw what it did to that fisherman. Well, I don't ever recall having any trouble in those waters. Well, what else could have done that to this guy? Saying it was some kind of a large fish with an appetite for human flesh is absurd. Couldn't it have been a piece of glass responsible for this? Dr. Quimby? Well, uh... Dr. Quimby? Well, uh, uh, yes, I think possibly, uh, yes. Yes, it most definitely was a shard of glass. Yes, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that it was from a bottle of Schlitz malt liquor beer. <laughs> That's not what you had in this your report, Doctor. I was wrong, Chief. We'll have to amend those reports. It was a bottle of Ham's beer. I thought you said it was a Schlitz beer bottle. What's the story, Doc? <laughs> yes, Schlitz beer bottle. Uh, yeah, uh... Found glass fragments in the woods, and after all, uh, extensive analysis, most definitely it was Schlitz from a Schlitz mail bottle. <laughs> and you will stand by that? Can I have a word with you in private, Chief? Uh, would you join us, Brewster? Uh, don't you think you're taking this a little too far, Martin? I'm sure it was some moron that threw a bottle of beer in the lake, and that fisherman walks out in the water for, or for whatever reason and gets his foot cut up. Well, it's happened before, Chief. For Pete's sake, that guy's toes were completely cut off. Uh, I don't think you fully understand the gut reaction people have to these things. Larry, I understand it, but I was reacting to what Dr. Quimby there had his report. Martin, it's all psychological. You yell, lunker, largemouth bass, and people will go. Let's go catch it. You yell, monster musky, and we got a... <coughs> a throw you a clip, and a full-fledged panic on our hands. And that's bad for the big fishing tournament next weekend. After being told in subtle terms by the mayor not to create chaos over the Jackson, Jackson fishing incident, Chief Roby took a different approach in handling the fish attack. On Monday morning, bright and early, the chief was at the lake, seated in a lawn chair in a position overlooking the beach. Dressed in non-official clothing, wearing colorful Hawaiian shirts and a pair of swimming trunks with flip-flops. Keeping a watchful eye on the waters without creating a threatening situation to the many visitors who would be spending the day at the beach. The morning came and went without incident, and now it is early the afternoon. Ranger Brewster, this is Chief Roby. Have you anything to report? There's been no activity out of the normal here, aside from some kook swimming in his birthday suit. Wait, I'll have to get back to you. Hey, young man, young man, what are you doing? What are you worrying me? Leave me alone, old man! I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were... Help! There's something out the bottom! The bottom! Somebody! Please help me! I'm out! Get in here! Get in here! Get in here! Get in here! Everybody, get out of the water! Get out of the water! I have a young boy, about 10 years old, with injuries to the lower extremities. Was bit by a large fish. Request an ambulance to the Hadley Lake Beach. In the 
the news today, 11-year-old Timmy Keltner of Red Rock, Iowa, sustained serious lower leg injuries when he was attacked while swimming at Hadley Lake Beach in Hadleyville, Iowa. The cause of the accident is under investigation. An emergency meeting was called at Hadley City Hall. I got to see the cop come up and one of his posts to the board by catching the muskie that attacked her son. Yes, that's a hefty reward for that fish. But I sure could use that kind of cash. Dick, I was heading over to Walmart to get a Shakespeare Riding Meal combo and some of those great Canadian Mac products. Excuse me, gentlemen. I got to talk with Mrs. Keltner because this is going to turn into a contest. Why would she take an ad out? Well, it's not only the register, she's also advertising in all the papers. Now people all over the state of Iowa are gonna know about this. The town meeting will begin shortly. Right in here, please. Right in here. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's have some order. Uh, no, 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 thank you. Now, are there any questions? I, uh, I got, uh, is that, is that three hundred dollar reward on that fish and, and cash or check? <laughs> quiet, 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 Martin, Martin, would you uh, please? Uh... All right. I just want to tell you what we are planning so far. We're going to put on extra summer deputies as soon as possible, and we are going to use musky spotters on the shorelines and the beaches. Are you going to close the beaches? Yes, we are. We are also going to bring in some experts on muskies from Canada and Minnesota. Uh, the beaches will be closed for only 24 hours. Just 24 hours. I didn't agree to that. Only 24 hours, Chief. You all know me, and where I'm living. I'll get this bud for you, but it ain't gonna be easy. This is a bad fish, not like going down. Fishing for bluegills, crop air, a wool mouse. This muskie, you swallow your toes. A little shaking, a little tenderizing, and down they go. We gotta do it quick. That'll bring back your choice. That probably your business is on a pay in basis. But it's not gonna be pleasant. I value my tootsies a lot more than 300 bucks, Chief. I'll find them for 300, but I'll catch them, and I'll fillet them for 1500. Now you gotta make up your minds. You wanna keep your toes and any up? Or do you want to play it cheap and be on crutches all winter? I don't want no volunteers and I don't want no mates. There's too many fishermen in this town. $1,500 for me by myself. For that you get the head, the tail, the whole stupid fish. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Quip. We'll uh, take that under advisement. Mr. Mayor, Chief, ladies and gentlemen, The next day, fishermen from all over the Midwest gathered at the boat dock at Hadley Lake in hopes of catching the muskie and collecting the $300 reward. Polly, listen to me. We got some roadblock signs outside. Now you got to get somebody to help us. Now, now we get those roadblock signs out on the highway because we, are, we got more people here than we can handle. Well, you got that right. What are you going to do, Brewster? These are your people. Go and talk to them. Well, these aren't my people. I'm all alone out there. Did you see those license plates? Nebraska, Missouri, Michigan? 
what happened to the extra help we're supposed to have. That's not until next week. Between now and then, it's you and me. A short, stocky man approached Ranger Brewster and Chief Roby. There are eight guys on the fantail out there. You know which ones I mean? Yeah. They are not going to make it 20 feet from the dock without capsizing that boat. Brewster, that's what I'm talking about. You know their names. Talk to those clowns. You seem to be having a real good time today. Tell me about it. Can you tell me how to find Chief Roby? Who are you? Matt Blooper. I'm from the Minnesota Conservation Institute. For crying out loud, you're the guy we call. I'm Martin Roby. I'm glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you too. Listen, I know you have a lot on your hands right now, but uh... What can we do for you? Well, I think the best thing for me to do is to see the toes of your first victim. Sure, just, just, just bear with me. That evening, Chief Roby and Matt Blooper met at the hospital. Dr. Quimby, this is Matt Blooper of the Minnesota Conservation Institute. He's here to help us. Could you show Mr. Blooper our accident? Mr. Blooper, if you would please step this way. I have here findings of the examination I performed. <laughs> Victim identified as Art Jackson, age 63, white male, 5'10", 230 pounds. And here's the problem on, on line 5. Cause of accident, stepped on broken Falstaff beer bottle, which resulted in the severing of the toes of right foot. Falstaff beer bottle? Yes, I am determined with absolute certainty a broken Falstaff beer bottle was the cause of Mr. Jackson's injury. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay, Quimby, show him the accident. Now lift up the sheet and show Mr. Hooper what we have here. Woo-wee! The toes have been severed between the first and second metatarsal and first proximal flange of the right foot. Can I have a glass of water, please? There is massive tissue loss. Thank you. And partially denuded bone fragments present. This was no broken glass accident. Did you notify anybody about this? No, just the local jurisdiction. See this toe? This is what I believe. The bite indicates the non-group feeding of your large fish, possibly a northern pike or muscalunge. The large amount of tissue loss prevents any detailed analysis. However, the attacking fish must be considerably larger than any normal fish found in waters in this area. Didn't you take your boat out and check these waters? No, with the examiner's report, we didn't bother. Did we, doctor? My findings were conclusive! This is not from broken glass from a Falstaff's beer bottle. I would stake my career on it. And as far as being the result of a bite from a snapping turtle, as some of the locals have been saying, there's no way that can be the case. I fully believe that it was a musket. excitement at the boat docks. We got a call saying that a local fisherman caught a large fish off of Turner's Point. Chances are good that we got our fish. I'll be the judge of that. That's one big fish. You see Nick Ward caught it? No, no. I got the fish. Great job, Rodriguez. That's a real whopper. Looks like we have our fish, boys. So that's musky. No, I'm no deep. It is a long-nosed guard. Oh, oh yeah, right. How big is it? He dipped the scale at 45 pounds, 9 ounces. It's the biggest fish I ever caught in this league. Wow, that's one big sucker. What'd you call me? <laughs> I got a call to come out here. Larry, you won't believe what happened. Rodriguez caught the fish. We can start breathing again? Wow, that's one menacing fish. 
No doubt about it, the Mexican got the perpetrator. Roby, would you hand me that tape measure out of my kit? I want to check something. Mayor, I want you to meet Matt Blooper. Matt, this is Larry Vaughn, our mayor. Mr. Mayor, Martin, I don't want to throw cold water on the party, but there are all kinds of fish in this lake. Crappy, bluegill, catfish, walleye, and the chances that this fella caught the exact fish is crap. Not likely. Oh, there are no other fish like this in this lake. It's a hundred to one. A hundred to one. I'm not saying this isn't the fish. It may well be the one. Martin, it may be the fish. Long-nosed gar are very aggressive and are extremely rare for waters in this area. But the fact is the bite radius on this fish is far different from the wounds on the severed toes. What are you trying to say, Matt? Come on, this has got to be the fish. I just want to be sure. You want to be sure. We all want to be sure. Now what I want to do is very simple. The digestive system of this fish is very slow. Let's cut it open and whatever it has eaten in the last 48 hours is bound to still be in there. Then we'll be sure. What do you think, Mayor? Uh, it, it may be the only way to confirm this is the fish. Look, fellas, let's be reasonable. This is not the time and place and place to do some ridiculous autopsy on a fish. And I'm not going to stand here and see that thing cut open and see Art Jackson and that Kelter boy's toe spill out on the dock. Mayor, turn it down. Mrs. Kelter is coming. <clears throat> Jeez, Ruby! Yes, Mrs. Kelter? residence. Can I help you? Hi, I'm Matt Blooper from the Minnesota Conservation Institute and I have city hands. Hi, I'm Ellen Roby. Is your husband home? I'd really like to talk to him. Yes, so would I. Martin, would you like a cup of coffee? No, I already have this Mr. Pibb I'm drinking, but thanks anyways. So, Chief, how was your day? I've had better days. My husband tells me you're in the muskies. <laughs> well, I've never heard it put, in, put that way, but yes, I am. I love muskies. You love muskies? Is that a little extreme? When I was 12 years old, my father got me a 10-foot John boat, and I would go fishing off of the point at Lake Jefferson. One time I hooked a perch, and as I was reeling it in, a 36-inch pike latched onto the perch, which proceeded then to tear up my fishing net, along with rooting a perfectly good perch, while mainly my best map spinner. <laughs> <laughs> as I leaned over to pull him into the boat, my glasses fell off into his mouth, and the big fish chewed them to bits, and ever since then, yes, I have been studying the pike family, and that's why I know that I'm going to the board tomorrow and tell them that you still have a problem. Why did you have to tell her that? I'm sorry, but I thought the fish was caught. I heard that on the news. They caught a fish, yes, but not the fish. Not the fish that attacked Art Johnson, and it's most likely not the fish that attacked the Keltner boy, which I wanted to prove today by cutting the fish open. You know, Martin, you're going to be the only rational man left in this town after I leave tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm going on to Chisholm. What in the world is a Chisholm? 
It's like a floating fishing lab for muskie fanatics. For two months, I will be researching the muskie on Lake Superior. Martin hates boats. Martin hates water. Martin won't even sit in the bathtub without a life preserver. I guess it's a childhood thing. There's a clinical name for it. Isn't there, Martin? Yeah, it's called drowning. You said, isn't it true that most people get attacked by muskie and water less than two feet deep? Yes, that's true. In fact, it is not uncommon for attacks to occur in the water less than 12 inches deep. And before people started to fish for recreation, and before muskie knew what they were missing, a lot of these attacks weren't reported. That's right. Now this muskie swims along. He patrols the area where the feeding is good until the food supply is gone. Right? It's called getting while the getting is good concept. It's a theory that I happen to agree with. Well then, why don't we finish our sodas and go down and get that fish and see what's inside of it? Martin, can you do that? What will the mayor say? Mayor Vaughn can jump in the lake for all I care. I can do anything. I'm the chief of police. That night, that night, Chief Roby and Matt Blooper made their way to the taxidermist. Man, that is one nasty looking fish. I would have bet a month's salary that this was the one that attacked Jackson and the Kelver kid. So, so where do you start cutting? First we start with an incision in the elementary canal and work our way up the digestive tract. I think I'm going to be sick. Let's see what we have here. A bluegill, a dipsy diver lure, a titulous golf ball, and a G.I. Joe action figure. Well, that's all that's in this big guy, big guy. Well, that settles it. I'll call the mayor and tell him we have to close the beach. you got a bigger problem than that, Martin. You still have a heck of a big fish swimming around in Hadley Lake with a mouth as wide as a toilet bowl. Hello, Karashenka, Tatlidum is specialist. Yeah, he is here. Just wait a minute, I will get him. Hey, Chief, you want it on the telephone. How did you know you were here? Chief Romy. Oh, no! When and where did it happen? Is he hurt bad? Oh, crap! Hey, what about the fish? You've ruined him! Sorry, Carl, but that fish doesn't mean squat to us now. Matt, there's been another attack. When did it happen? Half an hour ago, Nick Ward got his hand all chewed up. I thought this was the fish. Carl, that fish was harmless. That Mexican is going to be hot dog. What am I supposed to tell him? Tell him to fry up the fish. He'll be excellent eating. Roby, Chief Roby and Matt Bluebird jumped into the police cruiser and hurriedly drove to Hadley Lake, where a third attack had occurred, investigating Nick Ward's 12-foot Sears v. Bottom fishing boat. This time, Matt Bluebird found solid evidence which affirmed the town's worst fears. Larry, Matt Bluebird was right. It's a musket and a big one. Look, the situation is that apparently a muskie has staked a claim in these waters. It will continue to feed here as long as there is a food supply. There's no limit to what he can do. We've had three incidents. If you keep the lake open for the fishing tournament, it'll be like ringing a dinner bell for crying out loud. Mayor, I pulled this tooth the size of a large toothpick out of Nick Ward's glove, and it is definitely from a muskie. Show him the tooth, Matt. Oh, shoot. Nuts. It's like this. I had KFC 
for lunch and I wasn't thinking and used the musky tooth to remove a piece of chicken lodged between my teeth. And then I threw it away. It was a stupid mistake. Sorry, Martin. What? You used it as a toothpick and threw it away? Ah, uh, so let me get this straight. You no longer have the musky tooth? Trust me, Larry, we did have a musky tooth. Uh, you realize that if we close this lake, this town is finished, done for, demolished. You are not going to have a summer season until you deal with this problem. We have to close the lake and then hire somebody to kill the muskie. Both of you are not familiar with the problem we will have if we close down Hadley Lake. I think I am familiar with the fact that you will ignore this problem until it swims up and bites you in the foot. That's what I'm familiar with. You arrogant young fool. Cooler heads need to prevail here. We have to come up with a solution, men. Okay, okay. I have something. There are two ways to deal with this problem. You either kill this thing or cut off its food supply. The finishing, the finishing, the fishing tournament is this weekend, and let me make this clear to you. We will be open for business. Now, if you fellas are worried, you do whatever is necessary to ensure that Hadley Lake is safe. But the lake will remain open. Do I make myself clear? This whole town is going to be missing toes. It was a picture-perfect setting on the first day of the Hadley Invitational Bassmasters Classic. The town was hope hopping with excitement. Hundreds of contestants converge on the 1,200-acre lake in hopes of grabbing the top prize, while a silent predator lurked beneath the surface, docking its next prey. Okay, I want to know how many men you're going to send me. Come on, Harry. Surely you can find me someone. There's no need for me to come to Superior when I've got a rogue muskie right here. I'm telling you, this fish is an amazing study. I'll be a... I'll be in touch with you. Harry, we need men to patrol the fishing areas. If there's anyone with a boat, send them down. John boats, paddle boats, even belly boats. I don't care. Just send them. Hadley Lake has been long known for its crystal clear blue water, outstanding fishing, and beautiful white sandy beaches. But in recent days, a black cloud has, appear has appeared in the shape of a giant muskie that has been terrorizing the fishermen and swimmers of its waters. This is Crystal Reasoner of Channel 7 News. With me is Larry Vaughn, the mayor of Hadleyville, where a muskie has been stalking the waters of Hadley Lake. Mayor Vaughn, what is the situation in Hadleyville? I'm pleased to announce that we have indeed caught and killed the large fish that's allegedly injured fishermen and a young boy. You can see now, it is a beautiful day. The lake is open and fishermen are catching their limit of largemouth bass. So vacationers and tourists are, the mo are most welcome to visit our fine city. You have nothing to worry about. Thank you. This is Scott Davidson of TV station KKZT. There are reports out of tourist town Hadleyville that another violent attack has occurred on Lake Hadley. The victim, a 37-year-old man named Frank Phillips, who was a contestant in the Hadley Invitational Bassmaster Tournament, gives <coughs> me a brutal attack by a large fish. Reportedly, Phillips lost multiple fingers, toes, and after the incident, the doctors say he is in serious but stable condition. The incident is currently under investigation.
jurisdiction by the authorities. Jim. Following the attack, Chief Roby confronts Mayor Vaughn. I want to see the mayor. Mayor Vaughn is not in his office. Chief Roby, can I take a message? Not in his office. That's a load of garbage. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry, Martin. You got a pen, Larry? A pen? Yeah, a pin, Larry, because you're going to do what you do best. You're going to sign this voucher so I can hire a fisherman. I don't know if I can do that. We're going to hire Quip to kill the muskie. I don't know. I just don't know. What? What are you talking about? Larry, the summer is over. You are the mayor of Muskie City. These people think you want the lake open. I thought I was doing what was best for the town. Yeah, that's right. And that's why you're going to do the right thing now. We're going to pay that guy what he wants. Martin, my feet were in the lake too. Sign it, Larry. Now that's a good boy. After confronting Mayor Vaughn, Chief Roby pays a visit to Quip. Well, 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 if it isn't Chief Roby, what can I do for you, Chief? We want you to catch that fish. Will you help us? It's up to you, Chief. You know my price. $3,100. $100 a day whether I catch him or not. $3,100? I thought it was... All right. All right, it's a deal. Mm, just a few things before I take the job, Chief. Get the mayor off my back. No more of that zoning crap. You got it. I want 424 packs of Mountain Dew. Throwback. You buy the lunch. Two 24 packs, and I'll get you two free dinner buffets at Royal Fork when you do the job. I believe it's a uh, old country buffet now, Chief. Snacks! I want two blazing Buffalo Ranch Doritos, three mega-sized packages of M&M peanut, and a large box of slow pokes. The slow pokes will be hard to get. Get it an old deal, Chief. All right, I'll get it. Uh, then you got a deal, Chief. Hey, Chief, try this. Made it myself, pretty good stuff. Here's the fishing with a Zebco 202. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, Chief, the mixture of Pepsi, barbecue sauce, and habanero peppers. <laughs> It'll put a hand on your chest, you filthy son of a ditch digger. I'll burn your insides out. <laughs> oh, boy. Mr. Quip, you're gonna need extra hands. And who might you be, fella? The name's Matt Blooper. I work for the Minnesota Conservation Institute. Now I know you're kind. I've got experience. I've crewed before on a Minnesota fishing e expedition. Well, Mr. Blooper, we're not talking about pleasure boating or kitty fishing. We're talking about working for a living. We're talking about piking. Well, Mr. Quint, I'm not talking about hooking some poor bluegill or crappie. I'm talking about catching a muskie. Well, well, well. Yeah. Throw me a sheep shank, or tiny one, I should say. For crying out loud, is this a Boy Scout troop? You didn't say how short you wanted it. Catch. Yeah. Don't throw that at me. Give me your hands, blue pot. Come on, there you are. You've got a hundred dollar net, blue pot. You've got a hundred thirty-five dollars worth of fishing gear. Along comes Mr. Monkey, Muskie. And by the time he's finished with that net, looks like a kitty scissor class has cut it up for a paper doll. Huh. 
You got shitty hands, Mr. Hooper, or girly hands. You've been counting money all you and trophy fish all your life, haven't you? Hey, I don't need this working class fisherman crap. You're gonna. You're not gonna do this on the boat, are you, Quip? You darn sure I'm gonna do it. Maybe I should go alone. That's the deal, Chief. Well, it's my party and then my yeah, charter. Yeah, that's your charter. It's your party. It's my vessel. You're on my vessel. I'm the captain. And you're the mate and you're the first mate. <laughs> that understood, Chief? Early that Friday morning, Chief Roby, Matt Blooper, and Quip set out on a perilous adventure that they would never forget. So, this is your boat? Kinda small, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Lone Deep's V-16 footer, Blooper. With a 15-horse Evan Rude motor. I call it a whippet. Not what you're used to, is it, buddy? These northern boats you ride on, 40 foot is all decked out, nice and fancy. You got probably a high definition television in them, don't you, Hoopa? But don't worry now. It's got a place to take a leak and to drop a load, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right over the side of the boat. That's where I'm gonna take my squirts. Okay, okay, fellas, cool it. I thought you would have a bigger boat. Yeah. What you see is what you get, Chief. All right, here's what we got on the boat. Check me, Chief. One Johnson's spin cast reel with medium action rod. Three Zebco 202 rod and reel combos. They know tackle box equipped with a 10 size and a 7 red white bobber. I need three spools of Berkeley fishing line, one box of adjustable slip sinkers, and various sizes. A package of 25 snap swivels, 14 cases of Cherry Dr. Pepper, and West Bend fishing hooks, all sizes 3 to 8. Check. Wow, those are big bombers. They're the size of softballs. You're done right, Chief. They're my fucking bombers. All right, we got a fillet knife, portable fish scale, a subscription to Mad Magazine, Fishing net, BB gun, and two propane lanterns, Chief. Well, it all checks out. Yeah, okay, in case of emergency, I got a Zipco 88 reel with 30 pound spider wire. Quick with nine foot heavy action rod, Chief. Did you forget something? No. <laughs> uh, and what might that be, Blooper? Maybe a snoopy fish pole? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Quip. <laughs> what about the worms? <laughs> you have worms, don't you? <laughs> Well, my cat, six dozen of the finest Canadian quarrels in the cooler next to your potato salad, you eastern puke. I hope those lids are sealed. Uh-oh. Well, I'll check it out. So, Mr. Blooper, I see you brought along some gear. Let's see what you got. Hmm. A shimmy no spin cast rod and reel with a fish alarm? High pollutant tackle box with multiple compartments? And look at these hog dog <laughs> repeller deep drivers, MIPS monster musky lure kit, and what is this little doodad? It's a portable TV set. Where the fish hooper? Now watch the King of Queens or finding Bigfoot. <laughs> it's not a TV. It's a fish finder. Oh, oh, fish finder? Does it find fish for you, Mr. Booper? Yeah, it sure does, Quip. That's too bad. We won't be needing your little toys, Mr. Blooper. Because I'm pretty sure I know where our fish is right now. You know where it's at? The east side of the lake. Probably Get up, on. Mr. Blooper. And sit down. I don't need any of that eastern bull crap. What I want advice from you. Oh, that's right. So quick. Where are we headed? Looks like we're heading to the east of the lake, Chief. We look in the pond. <laughs> You think so? That's enough lip from you, Blooper. Or is it Hooper? I don't know. Aye, aye, Captain. Are you saluting me, Blooper? <laughs> all right, all right. It's time to churn some water. Commissioner! 
Fasten your safety belts. Yeah. If you see a musty hooper, a booper, get it over your head with a fish finder. Ha 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 ha! Woo! Hey, Chief. Take this bucket out and spoon it in the water, okay? This stuff stinks. What is it? And why do we have to be doing this? That's what it's called chumming, Martin. It's supposed to get fish to come. Makes me want to puke. Oh, boy. Golly gee, we workers. That water looks kind of deep. Do you have life vest quick? <laughs> Just keep shoving on that fish, Chief. Hey, who's driving the boat? Nobody, Chief. It's the lake wave. Natural. Oh, boy, I'm feeling kind of queasy. <laughs> You know what? One time I caught a 39 inch at Lake Easter. I had to use two bobbers to wear them out and bring him up. Nowadays those kids take out everything. <laughs> Radar, sonar, fish finders. <laughs> hey Chief, you best me. You know, drop another gut marker. Go back to the back of the boat. Get some more of those fish entrails and <laughs> we'll be all pissed. Is this the box? Oops! Oh. Watch it, Martin. You dropped my tackle box. What in the heck is that kind of tackle box? I've got some of the latest and most expensive crankbaits, spinners, and top wave lures in there. And they were perfectly organized. Yeah, Blooper. That's real fine gear you brought out here. I don't know what Musky might do with it. He might eat it, I suppose. One time I seen one eat a cabbage patch doll. It was a Robert Parrish one. Yeah, Chiefy. Next time, hey, when you get into the box, just ask me which one to get into, okay, Chief? We're heading due east. Hang on to your hats, boys. You go this way with the rope, and then you loop it through here. Nuts! I can't tie a sheep shank. Yeah, it goes this way, Chief. That little eel swims out of the hole, around the hole, and swims back into the cave again. <laughs> Do you see what I just did? You got it? It's a little tricky, okay, Chief? Try it again. It always takes a little time, you know. Yeah, what do you know? Looks like something is come a knocking. I'll just uh, get myself seated here. Uh, sitting down. Buckle myself in and grab my Zebco. Hey! I've tied a sheep shank! What the? Yeah, here we go! Rupa! Grab the wheel and turn this butt around! We got ourselves a big fish! Hot dog! No boy. Hey, Chief! Put the scoop back in the bucket! Wet this reel. He's taking a lot of lines. Burn it to me up. Boopa, what are you waiting for? Turn this around. I'm doing the best I can. No, I want it, Chief. Get your hand in me. Look like I took a leak in my bridges. Boopa, you move. Turn the starboard. Open your eyes for Pete's sake. OK, OK. Hold on. Boopa, that's good. Hold us there. Wait, what? Where's he going now? Hold on, you ain't fooling me. What's he yanking on now? Go on, try it, big fella. Hey, Chief, I don't know what's going on here. He ain't very smart or he ain't very dumb. I don't know which. Whoa, holy cow. He's gone under the boat. This is way too easy. <laughs> he's not, ain't a big dumb fish, is he? Maybe he's a big smart one. Maybe he's, he's under the boat. Rupa! He was steady now! I got something very big! I don't think so. Chief! Put your gloves on! Both of you! Put your gloves on! Hey, Quip! Let it go! Hey, Rupa! You may be at Yahoo in the lab, but I'd be on Hadley Lake near this the Doofus! So unless you want to do the back step back to shore, you need to get your gloves on right now. All right, all right, don't listen to me. It's not a muskie. I saw the fin. I saw the fin. Chief, take the ball. 
What, what do I do? What do I do with this? Here, Blooper, you take the pole. Maybe a large walleye or a striped bass, but it's definitely not a muskie. It's over. The line broke. Walleye, striped bass, huh? Don't you ever tell me my business again, Blooper. Quip. That, that doesn't prove it. Well, it does egg. Does prove one thing, Hoopa. Hoopa. Prove you a wealthy city, boys. Don't have the education to admit when you're wrong. You old fart. You don't know what you're talking about. Call me up. You keep your mouth shut, Mr. Hoopa. All right, let's continue to the East Shore. Oh, this is not going to be an easy process. Do you have to stand so close to me on the vision? Haven't you ever heard of elbow room? Am I missing something? As I recall, I was here first. Oh, that's great, Mr. Wooper. Look what you have done. You got our fishing line go, lines all tangled up again. Hey, let's just get this mess untangled. We're wasting back what a smile. Can't you two just get along? Chief, get up. How about making yourself useful and throw off that gut line again? Why don't you make Blooper take a turn? Blooper is getting the mess untangled, Chief. Now go throw out the gut line. This isn't right. Why do I have to do all the dirty jobs? Golly gee willikers. It's just not fair. Hmm. Come on, Blooper. Ain't you finished yet? We haven't got all day. It ain't like... Untangling crispy lights. This is a big mess. Just zip it, will you quit? I can untangle that line. Hooper, why don't you come over here and scoop some of this crap? Oh, me, oh my. They're going to need a bigger rod and reel combo. Did you see what I see? Look at the size of that fish. It's a six footer. Do you see it, Quip? There's seven footer. All 95 pounds of them. We got work cut out for us, boys. You're going to need a bigger pole, right? Martin, I need your help. I need, you know what? It's time for that. Zip go eat a week. Oh, it's about time. I have something else. Got me a red devil right here. It's a big lure. Is that what I think it is? You're right. It's a red devil lure number eight. The biggest one they ever made. Wow! My father used to tell me about them. I just thought they were urban legends. They really do exist. Yes, it's right here in my hand. But watch it. Best bet your sweet patootie, Super. This is the finest new money can buy. Hey! Hey! That thing is circling the boat! This is the whippet. I got this right here. Put on. Hey, old boy, roll it. What are you guys doing over there? Go to the bow. Go to the edge of the bow. Further around. Right like here? No, go further around. What for? Will you just please go to the end of the bow? To the end? Yes, the end of the bow. Why do you want me to do that? I don't think so, Blooper. I need somebody in the foreground to give me the fish some scale. Foreground? Baloney! I can go with it. I can go with it. Come on, hold on. I told you I'm here with it. Go ahead. We have to, what is my... She wants to talk to him. The other one's all right, Mrs. Robert. He's pushing. Just got a couple of nice walleyes. We'll bring him home and you can play him for dinner, okay? You won't be long. We haven't seen nothing yet right now, Mrs. Robert. Over now! Robert! Chief! Take your way on the other side straight ahead! I, I, I've never driven a boat in my life. Yeah, all right. Just watch my hand, Chief. Take a steady. Booba! Mr. Booba! Grab a couple of big bobbers! Along with that red devil, and attach him to my zip code 808. I'm going to jig for the bug off the stop on the bow, okay? That's good, Boop. I see you doing that. 
He's coming again, Robot! Get that pill ready! Hurry it up! I almost got it! Robot! Get in the car! Get in the gear, all right? He's coming straight for the moon, okay? Don't screw it up this time! Okay, cast it! Cast it now! Quit. Look! The bombers are going under! We're taking the red level! They're going live! It's you and me now, big guy. Oh, Christ! The glide has been broke! Watch out! The rod whacked me in the forehead! And it really hurts, too! Well, grow up, you little sissy! He broke that spider line! I lost my red devil lure, too! I can't believe it! I guess we're all going back to Bass Pro <laughs> later on tonight. Ah. Well, at least we have two big bobbers on him. Let's see how long it takes for the big bobbers to bring him up, Chief. Man, that, that, that's going to leave a mark. Look, the bobbers are on the surface. <laughs> bring the boat around. Ruba! Get another bobber hooked up. He pulled the bobbers back under again. Do you see that clip? It's been over 45 minutes now, and he hasn't come up to the surface. Have you ever seen anything like that before, Clip? No. Uh, never. You can't keep those two big bobbers down forever, Rupa. You just can't. What do we do now? We quit, right? No, 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 no. There's two bobbers on him, Chief. We'll stay here until he comes up again. Then we'll get another bobber on him. Don't you think we should weigh you in and get a bigger rod and reel combo out here? Another rod and reel combo? Are you kidding me? We need a bigger boat! All right, Chief. Let's just relax for a few minutes. Maybe we need to just settle down a little bit and get a little bite to eat, perhaps. I say we open up some of those old Milwaukee's I saw in the back. Yeah. We got, we got beer? Well... <laughs> It must be out of date, because I don't remember it being back there. Well, it's just age. That means it's better. All right. Let's do it, guys. Hey, Rupa. Help me some of that great potato salad, will you? That was just delicious. Thank you. Man. There's still a big bump on my head, and it's still throbbing. Chief! <laughs> Chief, don't worry about it. It won't be permanent. Hey, you want to see something permanent? Hey, boom! Here's something permanent. Boom, boom, boom. Put your hand under my cap. You feel that, lump? Got hit in the head with a bottle of squat. Burger King. Just ordered a whaler. St. Patty's Day, 1981. Hurt like the devil in Boston. I got that beat. I got that beat. Back in 1979. See this spot between my thumb and forefinger? Yep. Got horned by a flat-headed fishing at Waterworks Park. Went clean through my skin. Ow! Well, bloop. I don't know about that, but check this one out. Years ago back, I was fishing and hit a snag. I pulled back as hard as I could and the lure shot free and it hooked me right between the eyes. It took two hours for them to get it out, and it took 14 stitches between my eyebrows. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Here's another one. Look at that. Snapping turtle. Bit me when I was fishing at a farm pond. Bit right through my hip waders. <laughs> I got the creme de la creme. Where? Right here on my chest. Samantha Simmons. She broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one, Quip? <laughs> Which one, Chief? That one, that there on your arm. No, that was just a tattoo. I, I got that one removed. Wait, let me guess. Mother? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Blooper, that was a, that was a tattoo of the Cavalier. You were on the Cavalier? Yeah. The Cavalier? What happened? Well, yeah, Chief, we were fishing for King Salmon on Lake Erie. 
I'm gonna speed bow and slam it into that side, coming back from a good catch. Twenty of our men went into the water, Chief. The vessel sunk in about about ten minutes. We didn't see that first muskie at least for a half hour. There's a tiger, fifty-six inches. You know when in the water, Chief, you can tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail. Just how large it is. Well, we didn't know. They didn't even lift us overdue for a day. Of course, they can see us from the shoreline, but come first light, Chief. Muskies come cruising. Well, we'd form ourselves into tight groups. Muskie come to this man, he'd pound and holler and scream, and sometimes Muskie'd go away, and you know, sometimes it wouldn't go away. Sometimes they just look right into you with them blank eyes and that big snout and theirs and those sharp teeth and he'd come at you and he didn't even look like he was living until he bites your toes. Then those dark eyes, they just roll over white and then they turn over to black again and then you hear that terrible highest pitch screaming. You know, by the end of that first day, Mr. Blooper, we are still 17 toes. I don't know how many muskies, there must have been 50 of them cruising around. I don't know how many toes, but the average maybe three an hour. <laughs> During the second day, Chief, Fishman spotted us. Young man a lot younger than Mr. Booper here, about the, about the age of Frosty Sanchez. Oh, but anyway, he saw us and he went, went to get help. About two hours later, the ranger came on a big pontoon boat to pick us up, you know. Uh, he had about 35 sets of crutches on there. We all needed them. That was the one time I was most frightened, Chief. Was waiting for my turn to get on those crutches. <laughs> I'll never win anything again. But steel-toed boots when I'm musky fishing, Chief. 200 toes went into that water, boys. And 121. <laughs> yeah. 121. And the musky got the rest. Got 79 toes. Ah. to Boston, and now or never more will they see me again. <laughs> Show me the way you go home. <laughs> I'm tired, I want to go to bed. <laughs> I have a dream about an go, and it went right to my head. Show me the way to go home, home, home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago, and it went right to my head. Boom, boom, boom. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. We gotta call for help! Yeah. Will you wuss? Oh, give me the BB gun, will you, Chief? Thanks, man. Now come back, you son of a gun. Uh, come on, Quip. What are you going to do? <laughs> Don't waste your time. BBs won't pierce that fish. You need armor piercing shells. Come on! Ruma! Can't you see that crazy fish is in this darkness? I know it's dark and I'm shooting out in the dark. Put the gun down, Quint. Put it down. That's it. The fish is gone. Oh. Darkness gave way to the dawn's first light with no more musket attacks. On the with it, Quip, Chief, Bobby, and Matt Rupert were preparing for another day's fishing. Well, well, well. I know the pole's ready to go. If that fish bites again, Chief. Rupert, 
This new heavy uh, Berkeley maximum duty fishing line should hold it. Let's cross our fingers and hope so. First, we have to find them again, which will be no easy task. Don't worry about that, Booba. I'm sure he'll find us. We got 30 sets of toes on you. Hey! Look out to the left side of the boat about 100 yards. The bombers have come back up. Ah, there's our hungry friend. Chief, take the wheel. Get us over to those bobbers and slowly now. Is he still hooked to the bobbers? I think he got loose. And I think he's right under the bobbers, Blooper. Grab the hook, grab that line. Blooper, and tie it to the boat. Wow, I've never seen a musky jump out of the water like that. Drop the line, Blooper. He's running. And if you don't drop it, that rope, or, or even that line will cut through your hands. That monster is chewing through the line. Great! He broke the line and the bobbers all on him. For Pete's sake, what are we going to do now? First of all, let's fish those bobbers out of the drink. They're pretty expensive. Now get the poles and get the bobbers hooked on. Let's see if we can hook them again. In two hours, we haven't even had a nibble. What's the point? He's probably on the other side of the lake by now. We'll never find him. So, Quip, by any chance, do you have any topographical map of this lake? A top of... No, uh, a topographical what, Booba? You spouting more of that high-tech mumbo-jumbo again, aren't you, Boob? For Pete's sakes, Quip. A topographical map is a detailed map showing the water depths and where the submerged humps and drop-offs are in the lake. How do you get around on this lake? I've been fishing on this lake for more than 25 years ago, so probably longer than you've been alive. And I know every nook, cranny, underwater shelf, bluegill spawning spot, and I don't need any of them fancy maps to tell me where to look, okay, young fella? Standing here watching you two battering back and forth isn't going to solve anything. We need to find that fish, or we'll be out here until the middle of next week. Let's go get that musky. So, Boopa, what exactly can you do with this fish finder yours here I'm holding in my hand? It can show you how big the fish is and the depth of the water he is in. Hmm, there's no other fish like this in this lake. You really think it would work, Boopa? If you could get over to the fish, yes, we could pinpoint that is the musky. Okay, what do we need to do then? We will have to attach the transducer to the side of the boat below the water line. Then we should be able to get readings. I'll just reach over the side of the boat and connect it. Nice! I can't get the transducer to hold. I'll try it over here. No good. It won't hold. Well, what do we do now? I have an idea. I brought my belly boat. I will take my fish finder and attach the transducer to the underside of the belly boat. That should give me an accurate reading on the musky's location. Matt, that's a crazy idea. If that fish is down there, it'll rip your belly boat to pieces and it'll take your toes along with it. Well, Martin, if you have any better suggestions, now is the time. Well, it looks like we're ready. Oopa, is that thing good to go? Batteries are installed and the fish finder is in perfect working order. So yes, it's ready to go. Chief, have you got that floating inner tube inflated? It's ready to go. Oh boy, just wish we would have had an air pump. It's okay, Chief, at least you're not a smoker. You got a lot of air in your lungs. Get that thing in the water. Now let's do this. Oopa, you in the water? Are you ready, Blooper? I'm ready. Be careful. Don't let anything bite you on the butt, Blooper. Just stay close to me. When I find him, you'll have to get me back into the boat. And pronto. Do you see anything on that fish finder, Matt? Nothing yet. Are you sure that thing's working, Booba? It's working. I picked up three schools of fish, but not our fish. 
Where can that musky be? We've searched most of the inlets and jetties. That thing has to be here somewhere. Now let's give it up, Blooper there. Get on back. Oh! Oh! That fish is trying to knock us out of the boat. <laughs> Where's that BB gun? I've got to get that BB gun and blow BB gun size holes in the fish. <laughs> We've got to call for help. I've got to get the radio. Look at, look at the Hadley hand, hand, Bill. Look at the Hadley Bill. Oh, oh, no! I've lost the radio. It's gone! Ah, see! I'm in the water, see! Help me! I'm in the water! Help me! Hang on, quit! I'm coming! Hang on! It's got me! It's got me! Keep help me! Ah! That's that's it. I'll pull you out. Help me, my toes, my toes, Keith. I can't hold on. I'm losing you, Quip. Quip, save me! Oh my God! He's been playing under. He's gone. Man, where are you, Matt? What do I do? I got to get a hold of myself. Oh. The board's been tipped. What do I do? Oh, help me! God, help me! Help me! Oh no! He's he's coming back again. Get away! Get away from me! Wait. Next to the stairwell. What's this? You want something you eat? How about a nice propane tank shoved down your gullet? Take it! Okay, okay. Be back. Now what to do? I can see... I can see he's coming back. I can see the tank in his mouth. A propane tank. If I could just hit that propane tank, I could... The BB gun. Have to find the BB gun. The BB gun, where is it? There it is! He's, he's about 30 feet away and must shoot the tank! Oh crap! He's almost on me, must hit that tank! Steady now! Smile, you ugly bastard! Yay! Yay! It's over! The musk is dead! The musk is dead! What the? Oh, Matt, it's you! Oh, am I ever glad to see you. Where were you? I found a patch of cattails and I was able to hide. Nice shot, buddy. Are you all right? Aside from being scared silly, I'm doing okay. Quip? Where's Quip? The muskie got a hold of him. I think he's gone. I heard that. I'm not dead to your clothes. I've been eating donuts. I still want that money you owe me. Quip! I thought he got you. Oh man, it's good to see you. When he took you down, I thought the worst. I guess the uh, fishy didn't like the taste of it. Uh, my toes don't feel so good though. I must have been the wrong flavor. What are we gonna do now? The boat's sinking to the bottom of the lake. Hey Matt! You think that belly boat or yours could get us back to the dock? I think that could work. Grab on, fellas. Yes. You, you know something? I used to hate the water. Well, I have something to tell Alan when we get back. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago. 